time until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as an honor for Nabi Idris speaking out against the king of his time the Quran says one interpretation of was that we raised Idris with us as a gift to him because he was willing to speak out against injustice in his time you found therefore Nabi Idris according to many Muslims today is one of the prophets of God who is in a state of ghaybah if you go to many Muslims in the world today they believe there are certain prophets of God who are in occultation certain prophets who Allah decided that they have a role at the end of time Nabi Idris for example is one of them another of them is whom Nabi Isa alayhi salam Nabi Isa likewise Allah raised towards the heavens that's another one a third is Nabi Khidr as well Nabi Khidr until today is in a state of ghayba that's why you find it surprising therefore when we say that our imam is in a state of ghayba muslims turn around and say what do you mean he's in a state of ghayba as in what are you talking about how could a man your imam a man who's now 1100 years old what do you mean he's in a state of occultation we reply by saying hold on isn't idris in a state of occultation they say yes isn't jesus in a state of occultation they say yes isn't for example khadr in a state of occultation yes so if allah could put all of them in ghaybah why can't he put al mahdi in ghaybah as well even the context of nabi idris and imam al hujja is the same nabi idris a king who was cruel allah decided to raise him imam al hujja was at a time of kings who were cruel when they they were looking to kill him they knew there would be a line a son from the line of fatima al zahra salawatullah wa salamu alayha a king from the line of Fat a king who knew that from the line of fatima al zahra there will be someone who will remove injustice from this world allah decided that first there would be a ghaybah known as al ghaybah sagira then the kubra the great occultation taking place therefore the first lesson to be learned from the story of nabi idris was what was that nabi idris was the first of the prophets who allah decided to provide him with an honor bestow him that i will raise you in occultation until a day where you will rise with the imam of the time number two nabi idris provided islam and provided a message for every prophet that when there's a king who's corrupt in your land do not remain silent simply to please the king because that particular ethos was instilled that islam abhors a land where there is a king who is unjustly treating his people that nabi idris set a president for us as muslims that we as Muslims, when we see a king who is unjust, even if he says, La ilaha illallah, even if he says Muhammad Rasulallah, it's our role to speak out. And you know, there were many prophets who took this on board. How do you think John the Baptist died? Prophet Yahya, how did he die? Prophet Yahya died because he took the ethos of Prophet Idris alayhi salam. John the Baptist revered in Christianity and Islam, Prophet Yahya had a king in his time who wanted to marry his niece. Prophet Yahya said to him, Oh king, you can't marry your niece. In Islam or in the belief of God, the niece, you can't marry her. It's not allowed. He was disgruntled. His wife came and said to him, I'll let you have this niece if you kill Prophet Yahya alayhi salam. Did Prophet Yahya sit back and say, well, because he's a king and he's looking after my family, I don't want to interfere? No. When there's a king who's unjust, when there's a king who is a hypocrite sitting on the throne of the Muslims, it's our role to speak out when we see this. Eventually, you know what that king did? He beheaded Prophet Yahya alayhi salam, took his head in his palace in Sham and placed that head in the middle of the palace for everyone to see you found that Prophet Yahya took the ethos of Prophet Idris. When I see a king who is unjust, it is vital for me to speak out. This conception of a king who is unjust raised a major debate in Islamic theology and political th 